Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with a video that I said I would never do, and that is why you should never say never. This is a 560 Bowflex Select Tech dumbbell handle. It has no weights on it at the moment, but in a past video, I showed you a technique for uh, freeing up your handle when it gets stuck, and it involved sticking a wooden skewer or chopstick or uh, pick into each of the two locking pin button holes which unlocks the handle so that you can turn that grip. Uh, in this video I'm going to focus on this mechanism right here the uh, locking pin butt or locking button uh, on this assembly and how it works and how to uh, debug what may be going on if yours isn't working properly. It's a much more complex handle than the 552 and the 1090. A lot of parts on this handle, a lot of tiny parts. What you see before you, all of the parts here and there are just one half of this handle. So this is also all of these parts all over again. It consists of five ball bearings on one side, six springs, a um, snap ring, multiple screws, nuts, and plastic parts just on one side. So it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, you know, if you don't feel confident taking things apart, uh, then don't definitely don't take this thing apart. It's one of the reasons why I'm not making upgrades for it. It's I, I don't want to deal with the customer service issues of the number of questions that people will have taking these things apart and putting them back together again. Um, the, but, you know, if you're pretty handy, it, it won't be uh, too bad for you. Unlike the 552 and 1090, it does not use, uh, you know, a couple ratchets, a couple sockets, and a screwdriver. This one requires snap ring pliers as well as three different sizes of Allen, uh, two millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, and a five millimeter. Okay, so we're going to focus on this assembly, which houses the locking pin or locking button. In the 552 series one, uh, one and two and the 1090, there are two parts, a button and a pin that work together to lock the dials from turning. In this dumbbell, there is only one part inside there, and it is a combination of kind of button slash pin, and it has a very long and easy to lose <laughs> spring that accompanies it. Now, oh, and I should mention, if you are gonna take apart a dumbbell like this, put a towel down so that it can catch these tiny parts or you're going to go chasing springs halfway across your living room. So I'm going to show you how the locking pin mechanism works inside here. Basically, you have three parts that work together. The housing, the uh, internal disc that also happens to have all the weights on it that show through the little window here. And then the uh, pin slash button spring assembly. Okay. Now, the way it works is on the back side of this disc, there are notches, these square not or rectangular notches that fit. Let me check here. That fit this button. Let me show you how the two go together like so. So when this button is in between a notch, the dial is not going to turn the disc. When the button is pushed in, that dial, that disc turns. When the button, when you take your handle out of the base, the button pop, pops back out and this can no longer turn. So this has a spring that controls that in out from, uh, you know, when you put your handle on a base. When you put your handle on a base, it's pushing the button in, 
when you take your handle off the base, it's allowing the button to pop out and lock the assembly. So let me put this inside here so you can see. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get these in sometimes. But basically this disc slips under these two plastic tabs here. Let me see if I can do this without. There we go. So now you can see this turns freely in there under these two tabs. And if you flip this over, you can see where uh, these little notches fit into the grip. The grip actually grabs these and then that's how it rotates this assembly. But inside here, inside here, you can see the notches pass by right there. Okay. And this goes in here and it is a bit of a pain in the butt because there's no pocket up inside this piece of plastic to keep this spring in position. So the spring is just sitting up against this smooth plastic. If you're not careful, this thing is just going to bounce out of this assembly and go flying across your living room. So I put my finger over the spring to keep it from flying away. Push this up in to the assembly. And let's see, there we go. Oh, still wants to, no matter how many times I do this, it is a major, there we go, pain in the butt. Okay, <laughs> whew. This is why I say that this is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> so now the button is in here, the spring points upward, and this button basically can be pushed in and out of the assembly, but it engages the notches right there. And that is it, that's all this is. When you push this button in, you're simply pushing on that spring, and then this is pushed in far enough that the disc can then rotate around freely, as I showed you earlier. So there are people saying, you know, uh, you can put lube in here. Uh, I don't see that as being particularly helpful. Uh, if there is a problem inside here, it could be something as simple as this button itself has worn in some weird way or it could be the spring is misshapen so let me grab this button and spring it could be that something happened to this button and that now it's catching inside the assembly but you would have to take it apart to inspect it to see if there's something wrong it could be that something happened to one of your springs if this spring gets damaged in any way, it's no longer going to function to return this button to the locked and un, uh, uh, locked positions. It's not going to be able to do that. So the most likely culprits in this assembly are these two parts here. But you would have to disassemble this handle in order to get to these two parts. In a separate video, I can do a disassembly, I suppose, and show everyone how to go about disassembling this handle. Um, but I won't do it in this one because I'll, I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. So anyway, uh, now you know how that internal assembly works. It's just this disc, this housing, that button, and that spring. That's it. No more complicated than that. Everything else in there has to do with the uh, rotation and kind of uh, giving you fixed positions, right? When you're uh, rotating your grip and you hear click, 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 that's all those ball bearings and springs on the back side of this disc. Let me show you one sec here if I can do this without the spring flying. On the back side of this disc, which is also a lot of fun 
to take out. There we go. There's a series of pockets and uh, those ball bearings ride in these pockets. And that is why you hear the click, 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 click as you're turning your grip to, to adjust the weights. The ball bearings give it a nice positive stop at each weight setting. So they're not really involved. None of this stuff here is involved with the uh, assembly that I showed you earlier. This is solo. This is just these two parts working in concert with this part to uh, lock and unlock the rotation of this disc. There's nothing more to it than that. So the, if there is a problem in there, in your assembly, it's going to be with one of these parts. So that is it. Uh, hopefully this gave you an idea of, you know, the behind the scenes on the locking pin slash button mechanism on the 560 Select Tech. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. In a uh, separate video, I'll do a teardown of at least one side of the dumbbell so that you can see how to take it apart. But um, uh, yeah, hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and uh, I will see you all in the next video.